Hi, welcome to Culture of Paint. In this episode, we're going to take a look at what's caught our eye over the last couple of weeks in the miniatures painting world. For our main topic, it's the recent US Golden Demon, and we're joined by a very special guest who did rather well at that competition. And we'll close out the show, as usual, taking a look at what the paint cult has been up to. Now, Culture of Paint is aimed at a mature audience, so we might use explicit language and discuss adult themes. So let's talk about paint. Right, we are back in. The chat's all there. That's all working. I've got the slides up in advance. It's feeling good. It's going to be smooth, this one. Right, hello, everyone. Um, I'm your host, Henry, and joining me, as usual, are Matt, Andy, and Rich, and our very special guest, an old chum of ours, the multiple Golden Demon winning Prince of Plints, James Tarot. Hello, mate. Prince of Plints. <laughs> <How's everybody doing? laughs> good? Yeah, good, man. Mate, I, good. I make display bricks. That's what they're called now. Good. Prince right. of Plints. Prince of Plints. You've got to get that T-shirt made okay. now. Um... So well done, Henry. We, we 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 the three of you feeling all right? You're not too jet lagged, all the rest of it. No con crud. I, I think I nailed it to be I, honest, so far. My eyes shut within ten minutes onto the flight back. I didn't wake up with less than an hour to go. It's perfect. Wow. <laughs> yes. no. uh, did you have to fly peasant class on the way home though, Matt? Some people did. Okay. I I got uh, I got bumped up. Poor Matt. Again. Did you on both ways? Yeah. <laughs> well, not to business on the way back, but I got out of peasant class. <laughs> I got on to Matt. Peasant Plus. Yeah. Matt got sent through the ringer. Yeah. The other Matt. Yeah, I think he came Poor out Kennedy. about half the size, didn't he? <laughs> Was there no uh, no turbulence or throwing up on this flight, Matt? A distinct. Oh, I nearly, I nearly one. threw up actually, mate. Oh, yeah. Really? What? The turbulence, the turbulence was so so bad. I was close. Yeah. yeah was it? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was you flying flying bad. Boeing, were you? That's that. At least you off. You you've not it. got a lot of fucking luck with turbulence in your flights, have you, mate? Well, someone said it's me. I can't remember who it was, but they're like, "I'm not getting on a plane with you because I always hear about." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Have I told you I've had two car crashes as well?" <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you you're go. right, but the travel was good. But we will talk about travel a little bit because we have had a listener request to talk about uh, going abroad and whatnot with it. But uh, let's get some bits and bobs out of the way first. So it's been a few weeks. We were hoping to get a, an episode in before the guys flew out, but um, unsurprisingly, everyone was working up to the last minute. Uh, so we're, I think we're a week over where we want to be. So there's been plenty of things that come out, um, plenty of things on the social medias, not just what people have been entering. So let's take a look. All right, I'm going to put it on the right page this time. Look at that, professional. <laughs> so what, so people can see it as well? Yeah. Now on, oh, oh, slick. Season three, episode, whatever it is. No, season four, well done. <laughs> no, first up. Right, what we is... got first up? Oh, cool. Who's this one? The Hulk. Oh, that was mine, man. Yeah, that's my um, Josh. Josh Harris. Oh, but... Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's wicked, man. No, he does really nice um, OSL. I actually got to meet him as well there, and he's a proper nice guy. Is that from that, a Marvel game? The yeah, it's in the. Um, it was entered into Crisis Protocol. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, of course. So, uh, Adepticon, yeah. do the do a lot of the other manufacturers have? Because Chris, Crystal Brush is dead, dead. Gone, gone, gone. Dead. Good riddance. But obviously, Crystal Brush, there was no limit on what you could enter from sense of manufacturers and whatnot. So, do the other manufacturers do do competitions? They keep them pretty tight, actually, because you've got uh, Creature Caster, which I think allows yeah. a couple of other manufacturers. And then you've oh, got... you did something, didn't you? For I did, yeah. yeah. Got yeah. nowhere. Apparently, got ignored. Um, nice. And then you've got P3 do one as well. And then fucking hell, yeah, of course. Uh, Crisis Protocol. So yeah, there's four in total. So nice. what you're saying is there should be MPO Adepticon. <laughs> give <laughs> give it time, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. Yeah. It's gone well this year. Well, it hasn't gone yet, but it's gone yeah. well this year. Let's get it. gone to my out. time one to out. relax. One it's my relaxing line. weekend. Yeah. Did Bit you teach? Note. Did you teach this year at Adepticon? Nah, it's, no. it's, I'm too too busy having fun at Adepticon. Yeah, that sounds good. You will we'll see me at Nova though, doing all the teaching. We will, we will go. Yes, too right. Um, so yeah, so so you got to meet the painter. That's yeah, possible. no, he's an absolute dude. Yeah, he does some really nice um, OSL tutorials, and it's what I actually used to do the explosion on my jet. Uh, nice. He's been. He, I think he uh, chatted about all the fluorescent paints and stuff. Yeah, that's that's all coming from this bloke. I was wondering how he did that. Yeah, he's a dude. And he's not cheated with a black background. So. No. <laughs> 
episode or two ago, didn't we? The the fluoro explosions are so hot right now. Like, yeah. oh, they're wicked. The thing for, for the uh, for twenty four, I reckon. Um, that's yeah. it, that mate. Yeah. Um, right. What's up next? Up next is it's me. Oh yeah. Come mm. on, let's go. Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> love this one. I would have liked to have seen this win a Jolden Demon, but we mm. won't go down that rabbit hole <laughs> on this episode but yeah i love i love this and i was very happy to see rich uh paint more than just the face of a model i know unbelievable um, right and uh yeah so start a model and just kind of do it all in one go rather than bench mm. it for a bit and uh yeah i'd love to see rich continue this trend and pick up a model and, and get it done all the way so it's a lovely fun. um put like perfect artist for the miniature type model as well isn't it yeah, I said that. I said when he was whipping it, this is made for you. Like all the shapes, this, it's it's just brilliant. So uh, love yeah. all Andy's vamps, and uh, yeah, this one I think's the coolest. Also, it did the skeleton before and another model the same, but it was interesting. This one's actually a lot better, which I thought mm. was kind of crazy because um, <laughs> yeah, it was a really good job before, but he's kind of repeated that same skeleton with a glowing eyes and uh, it's great though it's things. from the really really old war um underworld, underworld. So, yeah could you still get that war band in any way i've got I'm it if you want. Rule, <laughs> no no but you know that like sometimes they, re yeah, they just re-released a bunch didn't they because they, they it was such a great set that wasn't it for like it's a new it's a new starter set. great skellies oh nice mm. okay there you go which if you would like i have <laughs> oh thanks very much i, I was add that's a pile of shit i'll never paint i was shocked how small this thing was it's stinky. I, I thought it was much, much bigger. Mm. Too busy it's, doing Primaris, mate. It's Danny. She Danny, is she's, Danny. she's quite big for a vamp. Um big hat energy mind, isn't it? Yeah. Um, mm. But she's because of course on her base she's got that whopping great snake normally, doesn't she? As well. Mm. Yeah, I like this more actually. Yeah. It's just lovely, isn't it? Did he do it as part of the unit or was this single S and then single figure? Oh, nice. Oh, I love the fact there was a link between single and new. Oh yeah, I said he's got a mega unit. Fam, now. Have a bit yeah. of that. It's just his his style's so good for it, isn't it? Like I love how he does Nurgle. I think I think Richie's suits Nurgle down to the ground, but I love his undead as well. It's um yeah baddies. Yeah. He does the baddies. Yeah, they're more fun anyway, right? <laughs> now, nah, great choice, great choice. Um, right. The only reason I'm rattling through is because I think we've got quite a lot of pictures to look at tonight. So um, yep. What's up, what's up next, next Matt? Oh, speaking of oh, this is me. <clears throat> yeah, so to keep this brief, this guy's really, really good. I say it's a, I think it's a guy. This person is very, very good at converting and painting Nurgle. Um, the yeah, they're just amazing. They remind me there was a um, back when Cool Mini or Not was kind of at its height. There was a mm. guy, and I can't remember what his tag or handle was, and he just used to paint Nurgle Marines, and they were great. And it just it's got a bit of that for, in it for me. I love the little conversions that he's done. I say little, the substantial conversions that he's done. It's really well painted. I just think it's fucking sick. So that's why I picked it. Yeah, that base is grim, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I was expecting to see him at Adepticon, actually, but I didn't manage to spot him. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Good Rusty guy. weapons, man. They're so hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> there are another, we, when we were chatting the other week, weren't we, about armies that you could kind of hobby in forever? Like, I think, I think Nurgle attracts quite focused people, doesn't it? Like, there's um there's there's not many casual Nurgle painters. No, like, you either kind of go, you, you go kind of go go, all. and I think it rewards an all in thing as well, right? It does. Um, I think it's one of those those armies. It's so tempting to just, and I'm not ragging on this because it is a legitimate way of painting an army is spraying it white or off white and drowning it in oils and things mm. like that because it's a really fun way to paint. Like Robin, yeah, like Robin. Um, but I love it when people really go to town on them as well because they are such good models. Um, and especially this conversion of it, they're just bro. So yeah, fair play, I say, fair play. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Robin take a bit more time with his Nurgle. He's just always rushing them and messing yeah. them up. Isn't he? Yeah. yeah, it's got the best painted Blood Bowl team on the planet now, though. Whip, whip. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had. I thought he actually had a team done now. No, he's got. He's got one team, and he's working on the second team. His Nurgle yeah. team at the moment is literally going to be. The most fucking insanely painted yeah. uh, blood ball team you've ever seen in your life. When in, in nine years' time, when he does every single play, one mode Rob, oh, best best on Nada. <laughs> Just get it, Just get it, get it done. 
Um, that's a nice choice as well, actually. Um, and yeah, chat, keep keep chucking questions and stuff. I'll try and keep an eye on it, but there's quite a lot of you in here. So uh, I don't think I've seen it go over 300 before. People love a bit of uh, Ooh, a gold dim. Um, so incidentally, if, if, if you're yeah, if you're coming for drama and soul and whinging from people that probably didn't even attend, that's that's not what DM this, me. Uh, that's not what this <laughs> one's for, right? Yeah, this you, open, is, uh, you open in a PO box. Take a look at some put some positive things. So yeah, what's up next? <clears throat> oh, Woo. so. Um, this kit has massively grown on me for starters, and that's simply because a bunch of people have been doing really nice one-offs with it. I um, thought that after seeing this exactly. And is it Kieran did a really nice um, green one? Um, mm. But this is a uh, Warmaster painting, probably my favourite, certainly my favourite Heresy painter, but one of my one of my favourite sort of Warhammer painters. Um, and this is the, one of the new Bretonian plastic foot knights. Um, but it is inspired by the old Warhammer Quest um, questing knight uh, model that you could get. I think I did. Did you get the artwork for that, Matt? I can't remember if I sent the artwork over. Yes, I, I, I do. There we go. Um, so just yeah, just really, really lovely, um, and multiple mm -hmm. reasons really. Also, when you're so used to seeing someone paint certain models, it's really heresy. Cool. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's just just cool to see them see them do other things. And I was just really impressed. I think it's beautifully painted. Um, I really do. Uh, I'll quickly it's... say that it shows that you can train on Space Marines and uh, paint anything yeah. else. Yeah, <laughs> Pretty yeah. good. If, I, if, I, if that's the case, I should be fucking brilliant at painting other things. <laughs> well, no, well, you, you have got to a stick few at demons, it. mate, and you. But we'll huh? never know. You've got, <laughs> yeah. you've got a few demons, so don't, don't you know. Don't All for clear, Space Marine things. Clearly, clearly does work. Now um, you've got Mechanicus and one Orc thing. That's probably your best thing as well. Oh, yeah, that's true. In Maybe. fact, you should bring that. Bring that to MPO. Betsy can finally pick it up 14 years after buying uh, it. Actually, he's from... got it. So... Oh, is he? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> um, right, any more picks on the slides? Mm, nope, that's it. Mm. Now, I don't think we had a meme. Um, no, but as ever, if you've got any, send them to Rich Army of Test Models on Instagram. Um, oh, he will he'll go through I, them. I, did see a meme, but literally we cannot show half of the no. GD memes currently. Well, standard, yeah. Half the GD, I can't, I can't show ninety percent of the memes that I get sent. Half of them aren't even GD memes. Half of them are just fucking horrific, just horrible. horrible memes. Do that what we send, need, mate. though, more than necessarily more than memeing is is the Photoshop crew to get back on it. We need we need G Dub to drop another model that can be tennis, placed. More yeah, play, I mean, tennis for me is the. The absolute benchmark, like uh, or high water mark mm. of, of, of of what you can do with it. But I feel like or we Mario haven't Kart. haven't had anything for a little while. But Mario Kart was just an outstanding paint job. There wasn't any Photoshop on it, was it? He just painted. Oh no, it. no, no. Mm. When they photoshopped before that guy painted it, and they photoshopped. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was amazing. Very, very good. Um, God, so they need to chalk that off on the old days since I thought about that <laughs> miniature. Um, right. Main topic, Golden Demon US. Golden Demon Adepticon, I don't know what it's called. It's the Golden Demon that happens America. over in America. Uh, and the last couple of years, it's happened at Adepticon. Uh, Andy, Matt, and Taro went over. Um, so I thought we could just pick your brains a bit about it, see if you enjoyed it, and then I thought we could take a look at a few of our sort of favorites that we've seen from the, uh, just from the Wahama community um, gallery. Um, I know there was tons of obviously tons of entries, but we're just going from the ones that are on that gallery that everyone can easily uh, go and access. Um, so, first off, the trip itself. Everyone wants to know traffic, getting to the airports, all that kind of thing was fine. Easy, mate. I had someone try and get my room at about four in the morning. That was nice. You so Matt had that last time. No, Matt, yeah. you wandered in on a couple last time. You <laughs> wandered in. On yeah, old, I, I wandered in yeah. on an old couple. Yeah, old couple. Fun time evening. Yeah, they had been a nice little cup of tea, and they had a it was I think it was GB News on. It was a bit weird. Oh well, God. moving on. <laughs> so you walked into your one then, Taro. So so yeah, you had some, a random. Yeah, some bloke was trying my door. Someone was trying my door about four in the morning. Warhammer nerd or no? This was before I flew out at the oh, premiere. Sure. Same as Matt. It must have been Saints okay. live the UK. Maybe it was Matt. Mm. Um, just, just give him up, up run out run out <laughs> old people yeah to, to knock out. okay so you get on you all then get upgraded to like mega class which is a oh, nice I didn't. Oh, no you upgrade didn't. bombshell it was no upgrade. so good yeah 
Beautiful. Yeah. Table Did you cloths, as well, Tari? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tablecloth and everything, mate. It was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah, the ginger mafia just fucking taking over business <laughs> class, eh? I like it. I like it. Um, so the reason I'm asking with it, we had someone uh, reach out a couple of days ago just saying, if you're going to talk about Adepticon, could you ask the guys about any tips they've got for going from the UK over to Adepticon to compete in Golden Demon? And I'm guessing they mean potentially just like transport and yeah, logistics things like that um so yeah i mean you guys have all done it multiple times i mean yeah. tara obviously you attend a lot of shows as for your job um anybody who doesn't know tara makes plints and uh resin additional bits for miniatures and stuff uh, we'll put the link down in the description um but um but you've been doing trade shows for a fair old while as well right so yeah, yeah. what's sort of your number one or couple of tips for traveling yeah, with it. I mean, take extra cases. Always take extra cases. Like the amount of stuff I end up bringing home. Oh, you just, mean just for spending? Like, yeah, <laughs> oh, 100%, man. Um, yeah, but like with models as well. Um, like I transported the servo skull over. Um, and everyone was like, oh, you're going to, it's getting broken. It's getting destroyed. No, nope. got it over in one piece, made a decent case. Um, and also, you know, look at your luggage allowance because I actually managed to fit a giant case into my hand on. I just mm. took it up in, you know, put it in the overhead compartment it's absolutely fine you know no breakages at all and did you do bespoke cases mm, yeah because yeah, matt you you designed mm. yours didn't you and andy you actually like modified your one didn't you um have i cut out is everyone no, quiet? Yeah, yeah, is everybody there hey, yeah, we're all there. Frozen. what's that okay. Oh, Sorry, you your case that you bring over oh, your minis, you've modified it haven't you you've done some some work on it I put in some steel plate so it's right. stronger. So uh, I got to take. Actually, I was supposed to buy another case, but I forgot. Uh, but I use a table war one, which is great, but they're horrible to get in the UK. So mm. uh, luckily, I'm not bringing any minis to Nova. So I'm going to buy a case and bring it home. With <laughs> but it's that. But you've gone for that. You and Matt have both got that flight case style, mm. right? And yeah. you've got steel plate in it, and you then. No, Matt, you screw your minis, don't you? you bolt yeah. Them so right the... I. I bolt them in just because I've had the worst luck in transporting on the last few things. The the TSA just on this one literally yeeted it onto the conveyor belt. It was just like, wow, I'm glad they're bolted in. Blue tack weren't holding those. <laughs> oh yeah, don't blue tack it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like it's it's how to it, it... Do you, do, you, do you think having a glass-fronted one is better or do you reckon it's worse? Because sometimes, I've, I swear when they have the glass-fronted one, sometimes they just go, what's this? And just tip the whole fucking thing sideways. So, no, it's better for yeah. sure. It's fine. I, I disagree. I think it's worse because no. they looked at um, Rich's when we were going through customs and border control and they were like, is that dirt on the base? And they sent him to Oh, the, yeah, you ain't getting in screen. Australia, are you? Yeah. That? Hey? <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Nah, it's definitely better because they like won't tip it on its side. Yeah, you tend to find as well they tend to get quite curious about it, and they actually, which wanna, is annoying. Oh well, no, they want to ask what it is. So you're like, <laughs> yeah, you can just talk about it. Be yeah, like, you, oh, you've got funny. you've got no shame, Terry. You think it's cool. With the right, I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, don't you're look still at trying me. to pretend that you're cool. I am cool. Like, I'm I'm no, not I, you, mate. No, you, you <laughs> clearly give up. Don't worry, don't worry we, about that. We were at check in at Chicago O'Hare coming back, and this guy had every uh of one of the attendants just chatting with him it was like oh my god how much yeah. personality and charisma do you need jesus well so what you don't <laughs> matt was cringing away like this <laughs> don't buy that i don't know if my camera will get so don't buy the ammo box from uh battle foam so that, oh, yeah, used that was to just hilarious. Have ammo in massive letters across it that caused some problems oh shit uh, and i have now consequently had a fabric um patch <laughs> So not instead. And what uh, was that. that hoodie you got from Ammo? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, just, it's just, just, yeah, just think, think about things. But I mean, I know we're sort of being a little bit flippant about it, but it, the American border control, whatever you call it, TSA, is notoriously um, keen. Um, so I think you know it, it is worth saying, like, just, just have everything as trans not necessarily physically transparent, but just as clean and easy to access and obvious as possible, right? Mm. And magnets, because that's the other thing, right? Mm. So Andy, you use like just mega magnets, right, for yours. You don't bolt yours, bolt yours no, in here. No, just mm. magnets, because also yeah. then then if there's a lot of movement, it might slide a bit. <laughs> well, like a little bit of suspension. Which, like... <laughs> but that's better than it breaking, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I think honestly you've got to think about having a, a project that's not insanely fragile if you're flying yeah. it um I've done that a few times and now it's like what's small and plastic and doesn't have loads of bits you've yeah. seen my entries right yeah <laughs> But it is. Uh, it's yeah. also another. It's another really good reason for plinths, right? Not to plug you, but uh, like it, 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 it is an additional thing to secure the miniature via, right? Like I, I know, uh, just physically picking a model up to look at it, it's always nice when it's on a plinth because you don't worry as mm. much. Um, so yeah, I yeah. think. And I also, think, I mean, I do uh, offer plinths and ins uh, magnets and inserts into the plinths now, so. Yeah, all right. Dial it in. I can do it for you. Um, we'll, 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 we'll be right. We'll plug still, in more. I later. still need that fun <laughs> on those bolts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so that hopefully that answered uh, your question. Um, the person that sent that in uh, about it. Um, and if there's any, I'm sure there'll be some uh, interesting ones in the uh, in the in the chat. Yes, I'm not going to bother reading those. Um, right. So first up, I thought we'd talk through Tarot's stuff that he took over. Um, because you did rather well with some of it. I um, did, And yeah. this one in particular I, has got lots of people very, very happy. Yeah, um, this is this is really blown up online, which is like great. It's what you want, mate. Like I think regardless of placings, I, there's always going to be a few pieces, isn't there, every GD that, that are just memorable um, yeah. because of, because yeah. of great <laughs> ideas, great execution and stuff. And I think this is this is one of them. Yeah, um, I mean, it's same with same with last year's one as well with my Grot Unicycle. They were both mm. in oh, yeah, the same of category yeah, as yeah. the Slayer Sword. So third place, I'll take it. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> All the way. You know, don't care. It's fine. Um, yeah, that's the way to go. Now, the bit that gets me, the fire extinguisher. Yeah. This is scratched or no, that's off one of the kits. That's off a scenery kit. Love it. Yeah. Wow. I re I remade the hose though. So the whole hose is actually cast around a piece of wire rod. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I could bend it into shape and get the curl on it and then sculpt everything. Oh, yeah, you stuck up some whips, didn't you? I've yeah, seen yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so come on, talk this through from conception through to realizing it. Yeah. It is a great one, mate. And, and we've all we've seen a bunch of people trying to do something cool with the force perspective and aeronautica and all that kind of thing. But I think for me, this is the best one I've seen. Oh, it. Just yeah, um, no, it was after um after last fest, literally driving on the way home. I was trying to think of new ideas, and um, you know, a bit inspired after that. I was like, yeah, this is it. And I actually got home, walked straight in, ignored the wife, went straight to the desk, and picked up these two grots. Um, and I think on the whip side up today, you can see the first two pictures, which I blue tapped them together. And I'm pretty certain I chucked that straight on our on our chat group after that. Yeah, after fest, and was like, yep, yeah, I'm doing it. That's it. I've got the two perfect figures. So it's the grot off the front of the uh, buggy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. one strapped in. Yeah. And I changed the head, oh. reposed the legs, changed the arms. I did loads of re-sculpting on it. And then the one at the back is the one off the back of the orc bike. So oh, yeah. I remember that first. one. Yeah. Yeah. Again, changed the head, re-sculpted the legs. Yeah. So there's loads of tweaks and stuff on them as well. Obviously, Sarah, stop, stop, stop tapping your desk. Oh, sorry. When you, that's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> excited man um yeah um sculpted the backpack as well um yeah that's just and it just is one of those projects just kept on developing and growing uh, and made the plinth i made the plinth and then obviously shut the jet on yeah i was gonna say when you did it did you did you sort of put them together then make the plinth then add the jet to make sure it mm. all lined up and looked all right and stuff yeah and didn't you do like a painting? like a stunt version to check everything on or something. yeah yeah i kept i kept playing around with them i tried it on lots and lots of different shape plinths and all sorts and um flat ones and different curves and yeah i literally went out to the workshop and just played around with a load of stuff i had in the box um and yeah like the fire extinguisher was just a last minute add-on it was like well what else can i do to fill that void between the two to create mm. a little bit more depth and perspective, and that's why the how are they going to be connected before just the smoke? Or... It was literally just going to be the, well, originally it was just going to be the two grots with I was going oh, to like have a gap, half, yeah, a gap, and then a half silhouette between of the mm. jet. But then on, I think Rich mentioned to us, I've uh, Dean Rich mentioned about putting the actual jet in itself. Um, and yeah, so by chucking the jet in, it gave another piece to help with the perspective. Um, yeah, it just it just kept growing. It's one of those projects that literally kept picking it up every few months, mm. looking at it and trying to think of new ideas you know, and how I can actually grow and develop it. Um, so good. 
No. I'm Did kidding. you enjoy it? <laughs> oh, I loved it. Every Good. minute of it. Every. Because I think that comes across. Like, you know, sometimes people create stuff and you think, God, oh, they've they've gone through the ringer there. Um, yeah. to get out and then there's other ones where you're like oh I bet that was fun yeah but yeah the whole the whole lot is all held on with just two little pins mm. two was that worrying pins. when you were when you were travelling with it were you shitting yourself oh yeah totally like I had to have a little bit of foam between the fire extinguisher and the grots to stop them from smacking into each other <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah and I did I did drop it when I was photographing it as well like literally the day before yeah I turned around and knocked it off the desk yeah, luckily. Sounds like it, something I, I would do. I know. Yeah, luckily only the jet moved. That's so fine. But yeah, oh, I mean the the backdrop as well. So I actually found a, a photograph online. I searched through loads of photos of different sunsets and and all sorts, and actually managed to find the perfect um, kind of gradient that I was looking for that worked really well with the colours of the of the grots and everything. Uh, printed it out to size, bent it to shape, and actually checked it. And then I just did a copy of that using the airbrush. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not AI or anything like that. It's, you know. Well, you don't want to do that, mate. <laughs> no, no. That's cheating. That's cheating, isn't it, apparently? Hang yeah. on, that's, that's for Neil's episode. That's coming up. <laughs> that's coming up when we yeah. get him on. Um, can I just stop you there two seconds just because I'm trying to catch up on the chat? Um, Sir Fred's asked, when you're going out to these comps, do you bring like a repair kit with you? Yeah. Um, or do no. you just get it there? Or No, I always take a repair it kit. Just in, just in case you chip anything, you know, touching a little bit of paint. But there's... Mm -hmm. They do have paint stations at Adepticon with all free paints to use. So you don't actually have to worry about That's um, nice. anything. You can just go up there and use it. That's a nice idea. Um, oh, yes. And <laughs> actually saying uh, Andy's big ass owl that he bought to Monte San Savino. Yeah, of course. That was that. Oh, yeah. I was traveling with that. Just have that on your shoulder. Um, uh, you know get yourself one of them big gloves and, you, and just. You just paraglided that the whole way across. <laughs> Did it break? So it survived to Italy and back, no problem. And then I sent it to um, Squidmore and it broke in the post. So I'm oh, sad about that. Oh, wow. And I packed it super well as well, like in a floating plastic box. So it was terrible. Oh, man. I had, you remember my first um, mini Imperial Knight that I got? I think I got bronze of in 2019 or something. That They're was all in... blurred to one to me. Yeah, it was. Um, I used, they used it up at Warhammer World for a while. And it got sent back to me, and they literally just chucked it in the cardboard box. It just okay. came back, and it's just rattling around the box in little pieces. Love it. Oh, dear. I enjoyed that. that. A was lack fun. of respect. Mm, no, sure yeah. not. Um, right. Uh, so do we want to talk about uh, any more on this one, or do you want to move on to... No. Uh, no and this... So this one we got yeah. a bronze for. Congratulations. Yeah, got bronze, yeah. So unless anyone's got any questions, but yeah. Very, very well deserved. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat for that one, um, and then we'll... Yeah. So what's up next, Matt? Ah! Now... I'm all right. This is a redo, yeah? 100%. Yep. Great. Talk more about it. Because obviously it's fucking cool. It's wonderful. Congratulations on the gold. Cheers, it looks man. amazing. But the redo thing, I think, is a slightly more interesting uh, topic, as it were. So I guess, firstly, and I know your thoughts on this because I've read your post, but what in, what made you do it, as it or what what made you think of doing it? Um, and what do you think is the the positives ar ar around that? Because yeah. there is a, it's a, I don't know, it, I think it's probably a bit of a fake dramatic thing around it yeah. um but it is a discussion right yeah 100 percent. yeah um yeah oh it was yeah because uh like my previous one i did so i've i've started kind of building a legion metallica army now and this is the second one for it and i want to keep it going uh and after the last um demon where this got commended i actually really wanted to keep pushing it and, and tweak it slightly and i was going to do another entry for epic but with the time and stuff, I thought, well, it'd probably be easier if I sit down for a couple of days and work on this one and try and get it to a point that I was happy with it. So I went back through and reworked all the metals. Um, you know, I've learned a lot since the last GD. And looking at the photographs they actually took of it for that previous GD, all the metals were just like super shiny and didn't really work. So it was going back in and reglazing things and just adding a bit more depth to it. And also now that the... Um, the Legio box has come out and you've got the new Solar guys chucking them into the base to actually set the piece into scale. Mm. Um, it I helps so really much. really helped it, yeah. It just drops the whole scale and you can see it and it sets it a little bit better as well. Can I can I ask about your motivations to it? Because I've contemplated doing entries before, but I've never entered one before. Because as soon as I've finished, if I finish something, I've deemed it finished and I've entered it. I really struggle to then pick it back up afterwards to, to then work on it again. Like, how do you personally right. motivate yourself to do that? 
I think it just comes from like, especially from like the years of model making and stuff where you often get stuff sent back to you and you've, you've seen a project multiple times, you've worked on it for months mm. and then people just go, Oh, can you change this? It's just having that, <clears throat> that gumption to go, do you know what? I'll just, I'll just rework it. I'll just change it. You know, especially if you're not quite happy with it, you know, cause I was, it was a tough one at GD UK. Um, and I was close, you know, Matt got it, which is fine. It was great. Really happy seeing Matt get it. But I did feel like I could have worked on it. And especially when you look at something and you, you think, mm, yeah, maybe I rushed that a little bit at the end. And just picking it up and actually having the the kind of guts to change it and tweak it. Because, you know, you can always improve as paint. I'm, same thing. I know a lot of people don't, when they finish the model, they said it's finished. Um, mm. But especially if you look at it, you know, I, I have it in my cabinets here. And I look at it every now and then. I think, yeah, I can do better than that. It's fine. I can change it. Yeah, fair. I liked your Ooh. point about um well gamers use their army more than once. Yeah. You know, why you add to an army and tweak it. Why, yeah. why it? why is it we should just paint a model once, re- enter it once and then that's it, chuck it in the bin. You know, if it's if you feel like it's got more to it and you can do something else to make it better, then why not? Do you feel there's that, no... No... Sorry, guys, you go on. No, Andrew's literally about to say what I was gonna say. Yeah, what if you don't feel like you wanna change it? about re-entering it because i've been i've it. been asked a lot about re-entering mine and i do not know if i would or not so do you probably not re-entering it with nothing nothing changed at all on the model yeah i stand by it so like like what would what would i change like the only what i would change is starting it again and doing it better but like i don't know um there's there's loads of mistakes on it for sure but i'd have to break them off the base and strip parts and all of this so um but i also feel like doing it like going to a show is to show something new and it's actually about finishing a piece and showing a piece not winning an award so if i bring it to the next golden demon everyone's seen it so if i get a trophy nothing changes it doesn't i don't get a new piece i just get a, a trophy which you know you could argue is nice but i don't know how i feel about it so do you think uh, th- there's uh, an element of, of a, I think we've talked about this before, actually, a sort of a, a season, as it were. So bringing, you know, we're talking about maybe you've d- entered a model at GD Fest last summer and now you're entering it in GD Adepticon now. If there was a fest again this summer, which there isn't, you know, UK GD, you, how, you know, we're not talking about entering it a year later, are we? Well, there's Germany, of course, which I'm going to. So mm. every, every, a lot of people have asked if I'll enter mine again to Germany, um, which is an option. And I really don't know if I want to. Um, and I've been trying to think about that quite deeply myself. And uh, sometimes I feel like it's a lose-lose situation, to be honest. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I, I might do, but at the moment I feel like not. If I could, if I could get the miniatures off the base to to change a lot, then maybe. But they're glued on; they're pretty good. Um, I don't think it's worth pinging them off and damaging mm. to change a couple bits. So um, <clears throat> I, I, I find it know. I find it difficult because for me, if I've entered something, I've entered it because I'm happy with it. I've entered, I've painted it to a point that I'm willing to enter it. Therefore, I'm happy with it. So for me, I to agree then, with that. So for me, they, like, because if I wasn't happy with it, I probably wouldn't enter it. So for me to then try and I'm then trying to like reassess what I think about my own miniature, which I just find really difficult. So for me, I'd rather just and it, like, it's just personal preference. For me, I'd rather just okay, I didn't get there with that. I'll start fresh and and try and do something a bit better. That's how yeah. I feel. I just want I just want to put it to bed and and do a much yeah. better piece. Like yeah. I mean, I I'm feel like. I feel like I'm always trying to improve what I'm doing anyway. You know, you guys have known me for a fair few years now. I'm trying to push what I'm doing and get better. And obviously I'm learning new techniques as I go. So mm-hmm. at the point of entering this one the first time, I was super happy with it. But then when you see it with other people's entries and you speak to them and you see about how they approach certain elements, especially true metallic as well, um, and speaking to Matt about how he did his, and then going away trying other models painting on models you know because I, I went away and painted loads between this and then looking back at it compared to what i've painted since then and actually going you know what i think i could just go back and improve it i'm only spent i think probably two days tops um probably about it's probably actually about 20 hours or so you know a couple of long days on it just repainting a few details of it and adding bits but 
applying those new techniques that I'd learned, um, especially because I want to get all these models to a, a standard that I'm happy mm. with. And um, especially as well, if I can get a few GDs for all this lot and chuck them into armies on parade, then I think that's going to set me on it. You know, these have already won GDs, so you can't really say no to that one. Mm. No, David, it's it's a it's a really interesting one. I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot more nuance to it really than simply yes, no, re-enter or don't. Um because yeah. I can imagine, you know, particularly if you've received feedback, you know, if you've gone out your way to either hire someone to do some coaching for you or you've just, you know, talked to your peers and got feedback on a piece, you know, you may not have the time between say the six months or whatever it's been between the shows, you may not have time to do a completely new piece for whatever reason, but you might be able to put that feedback into practice yeah. on the model. And it, it would then kind of be good to then see where it's just, but then I suppose in a way you, that you would need like the same judging. Or It's a tricky one, isn't it? I think it's, um, yeah, as I said, I was going to, yeah. I, I had a Bane blade, one of the new small scale Bane blades set up. Um, and I was all ready to paint that, but yeah, I think it got to like a week before and I was thinking, do I want to start a whole new model now mm, mm. or just kind of work something that I was happy mm. with, but not completely. And the nice thing is you've got an even cooler Titan, <laughs> like yeah. you're <laughs> right now, which is, which is great. Yeah. And now I've got two in the army. Now I need to do more, get the rest painted, of the painted differently as well. Yeah. And um, this is, I think what I enjoyed and I wanted to talk a bit about if we bring up your next one, your Necromunda one, um, is all three of them are painted in, in relatively different styles yeah um which was that intentional uh Partly, or was it yeah. a happy you know just no nope, completely yeah. complete intentional if you actually go through all six of my entries they're all painted completely different um like some it's kind of, it, for me it's kind of trying the water to see what works and what doesn't you know i'm 25 years into entering gd now um and I just keep trying new things, always trying new stuff, you know, different techniques. Like my servo skull was painted with sponges. You know, I pretty much sponged the whole thing. Um, lots of weathering powders. Uh, my troll, I was trying to do different things on that, which didn't work at all. And I failed on a few different aspects of that. But <laughs> you just learn, you just keep trying, you know. And I don't think I've set myself as a, a painter on one style. I just want mm. to try different things and always kind of rework stuff. And did I'm you interested. did you enjoy one? Of, can we stick the Necromunda one up, please, Matt? Did, um, was there a, a particular one that you really enjoyed, like this the one. the pro the process of this one? This one, 100%. right? Enjoy. I enjoyed the grots. Like doing the grots was really great. Reworking the other one was really nice as well. But this one in particular, the model itself, because uh, it was sculpted by Matthew Sheridan. That was it. It's beautiful, stunning model. Um, and to me, I could I could kind of approach it as like a mini Imperial Knight. You know, as you know, I've painted loads of Imperial Knights over the years. <laughs> um, and kind of take those practices and scale it right down to a model that I can work a lot more on. And if you notice, this is the only one with the non-metallic on as well. And I thought, well, yeah, why not? Just I've not done much non-metallic. I'll just give it a go. Well. Yeah. nice <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was nope, that's yeah. Yeah, very fair but also yeah. really really cool i think as, as someone who uh, again doesn't have a particular style um i think that's fantastic to sort of pursue them all to a a high standard to a display mm. standard um because i bet you learn just a fuck ton of oh, stuff absolutely doing that. yeah yeah um, i mean again coming from um what i've done in the past with my career um you every project is different you have to mm. approach things differently you can't just do one thing and that's it you've got to keep working on different different projects try new things you know and and you learn lots from doing that um, but this guy in particular this is one of those models that i just had sitting around for years since it first came out and i just threw it together um made those new plimps the the tapered ones and then actually the molded the butt plugs, yeah, that's the one. Um, molded some rocks for them as well. Like, literally took some slate, chucked it into a mold so I could make some nice light resin uh, slate pieces. Nice. Um, yeah, just tried to keep it nice and simple and kind of thought, right, I want to do this. And the main aspect, the aim for this one was to actually um, replicate the artwork, the original artwork mm -hmm. that came out when this piece was released. Because, again, it's just beautiful. I mean, a simple reposing as well, just moving the arm down. Um just because I think before it had its arm up, it just didn't really work, I don't think. Um, just bringing the model down a bit tighter. Uh, but there's some beautiful details on this as well. Like when you turn it around, it's got like a little lunchbox on the back <laughs> and, you know, it's helmet, <coughs> a little gun and stuff. It's just, yeah, it's just a real joy to paint this one. 
No, that's nice, man. Um, Fred's just asked in the chat. Um, says sort of a lot of the a lot of the winning painters often seem to know each other, um, which I think is is fair. You know, it, it is a scene. You know, it's a scene that we sort of promote and follow and, and are involved in all the rest of it. Um, but do you ever get complete randoms like out of nowhere? You know, with a steel chair, um, <laughs> taking it out. And of course, Gavin did, didn't he, a couple of years ago with the the um, skink. Skink. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think the reason so why we... first entry. Yeah. Was it really? I think so. Love it. Cheers, John. It's, it's tough though, because if you're if you're painting for Golden Demon, you yeah, you tend to meet people at Golden Demon when you enter and then you start talking to them about their next entries. And we all met each other at that sort of thing. The art people we know just from entering. Mm. So it's natural that you will, because then you'll get introduced to the people that they know that are there. And like you said, it is a scene like everything. Like the gamers, all the top tier gamers all know each other and, mm, and mm. communicate and hang out and all that kind of thing. But, but I mean, well, yeah, you do get you do get people though that are just fantastic at gaming at their local group, don't you? And then they, yeah. they turn up at a tournament and just kick everyone's ass and it's like, who the hell is this person? Like yeah. and it you know, but equally some people don't use socials, right? Um Chris Clayton, um, you know, no one really knows what he's up to, and then he'll appear out of nowhere and drop a drop a sword. Um, yeah, winner and stuff. Um, well, me and we were saying, um, that actually, me and Rich, too, off me and Rich's first golden demon in 2014, we met Rich Gray there for the first time when he got his Slayer Sword and Neil, where he won with his Ferris Manus. Yeah, um, and then we're like, this is our 10th year together, so um, you kind of know each other because you go to them, it's not like yeah. some yeah. some club, it's just you, you go to them. And uh, I've seen people come and go, like once we started in 2014, kind of done every single one because they're so fun. And uh, yeah, that's the only reason why it's not some yeah. clicky club. It's just turn up. Yeah. I mean, I think choice. I said in, in one of our chats actually ages ago that um, me, Rich and Matt Kennedy all entered our first one in 99. So yeah. yeah, 25 years ago, you know, we all knew each other back then. Mm -hmm. um, and I was out of it for a bit and then came back in you know and you get to know people and you know, i think me and matt kennedy sat down for a for a meal like a couple of years ago and that's the first time we've properly chatted and it's just really you, you've just got a connection because you do the same thing you know especially at um uh Depscon. you know you're sitting there at three o'clock in the morning around the cabinets having a few beers yeah i love yeah. a depth con for that oh, mate, it's great so good so so good yeah. the thing is though yeah. when you when you go when you go to them as well if you do go just go and speak to people like nobody's a prick if you go and speak well, to other painters well like, a few. Yeah. Okay, it's like, very it's few, like very anything, few right? people. There's a yeah, lot of okay. great people. <laughs> there are. Some someone will try and ruin it, but the odds of them being a dick to you to your face are all correct. Are pretty safe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh god, you know, yeah. I mean, most people once they boot to a goose, you're pretty safe. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So yeah. just uh just go and go and speak to I people, man. They boot to a goose. They, they were well. chasing us, they're well yeah. scary. Yeah. I've run away from a goose. Um, someone just mentioned in the chat, oh, it seems like hanging around with other GD painters will help you learn the style tips that lets you win GDs. So I, just to unpack that super quick, I think Martin. that whole I, iron sharpens iron thing is, is, is probably accurate. But equally, if you go back and watch a couple of our older uh, Golden Demon focus episodes, the, there really isn't a style um, that, that wins uh, G, G, GDs. It's, 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 I think that's a bit of a, a false narrative. Uh, to, to, to do yeah. it, yeah. go back and look at one thing you um, were saying, sorry about um, about all my stuff's different styles. I think the thing that I try and bring through for everything is the model making aspect of it. So that's one thing I grasp mm -hmm. onto is actually how I make stuff. I try and change and tweak stuff, but also I really love my freehand. Like on all these pieces, they've all got really minute freehand, like that little symbol on its chest and. Mm -hmm. The grot fire extinguisher so you do find i think you do find your little niches that you love um and yeah for me putting the free hand and stuff on as well but yeah you you speak to people and you find out what what you can improve yeah and you grow together through that yeah and and certainly the vast majority of people seem to be ever so generous with their their time and and, and you know and opinions and advice and stuff so i think uh yeah <clears throat> so it's definitely we, we again we've spoken about this loads of times like go to events talk to people people want to be there and talk to each other and enjoy it and nerd out because it's mega niche um and gamers get to do it every weekend wherever the hell they want to do painters don't get to do it as often yeah. so um yeah i always say that's so, yeah. my mates i keep saying um, to mates i messaged a friend while i was over there and i was like yeah gamers have got it easy you know you look at how many gaming events are on especially at adepticon and throughout the year 
you make an army and you can pretty much go to a tournament every weekend. Yeah, know. absolutely. Paint I mean, with, with the with few. the MPO, the two the two main things we focused on is one, obviously the competition will be good, but two, it's facilitating people getting together and hanging out and relaxing mm -hmm. and enjoying themselves, you know. So I think it's uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So, um, yeah, go and check out Terra's account. There's tons of stuff. Got previous demon winning pieces on there as well but you're a you're a you're a great hobbyist and you're well worth following so um do go and check him out now let's take a look at can't remember i can't find the notes dun, dun, dun. whatever's coming up next oh yeah a few of our personal highlights from it um so you mentioned matt uh, kennedy a couple of times uh, in the chat um took out the teeny tiny category at last year's fest didn't it yes Just a headshot it. Head, was it? <laughs> uh, yeah and, 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 and you know again the best the best celebration ever um on receipt on receiving also gone, the very it? appropriate with the chat because somebody just said tmm didn't beat anything and this is tmm in the gold <laughs> there we go I had two pieces <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, your, your, your your titan was tmm wasn't yeah. it yeah titan and my um grots as well they had a little bit of tmm on the um <laughs> on the hammer yeah whoever said that did just graciously went and say yeah my bad that's all right Nick. <laughs> <laughs> nick's great nick's always there yeah. um and, and engaging but again that's oh, yeah. that's why i reworked my titan because matt actually gave me a really good pointer about doing tmm so i went back and reapproached it i did tmm i'm gonna say that's why i lost so there you go well what, hang on that. what was what was that bit of advice you can't you um, can't just leave that hang <laughs> change changing the inks you use when you're glazing using uh ink ten ink intensity inks mm -hmm. yeah because it can make it look paint. more oily yeah oh, very nice yeah that's funny i was reading uh painting thing today specifically about using inks for the oily finish to do fuel stains and hmm. And whatnot with. So there we go. I love doing um, true also why they're shite for pre-shades. So uh next, uh Matt Kennedy, another skink, another gold. Is it gonna become a lizard's gonna become the thing? We well, love the lizard. <laughs> I think if he wasn't staff, that he would have been in for running Agreed. on the sword. Yeah, because this is mint. And I was glad it was there because it's I think it's nice. I was thinking that we're lucky we get to go to Warhammer World all the time. And I've said often that uh, because we see heavy metal level in real life, I think it ups the standard quite a lot. And mm. I think it, I hope that it was nice for um, the Americans that can't go to Warhammer World to see an actual heavy metal level paint job because um, mm. it is very different in real life. And uh, you realize how sharp the edges are because mm. although edge highlighting might be simple in principle to do it as sharp as uh matt does is ugh. i mean the little um things hanging off the horns it's bonkers how tight those little lines are on them it's absolutely <laughs> bonkers um and i like the elevation and of course the conversion uh he did for the the lizard riding it so got a few different kits in this one and uh, i think it mm. looks great you think you know sharpness and then you see this thing in the hand. It's mm. just yeah, you can't compare it. It's yeah. just ridiculous. It's all those all those little green panels. They're and mental, the, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Every single one yeah. showed every single one's got oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But that's in it, it's that level of obsession and accuracy. Mm. Um that's that sort of some of I, I, it's that's a really good point there, Andy. The, them being able to see in, in, in the flesh i think we're very fortunate to be able to get up to warhammer world kind of so often um but it but it is that again it's why seeing stuff in cabinets or on displays or whatever is always going to trump seeing them online um and i think one of the biggest ones is just the size of the damn things mm -hmm. um this looks incredible blown up on a computer screen like when you hold it it's in your small. hand right <laughs> tiny um because this is this is not big. Um, nah. It's, and the fact that even blown up at this size, there's elements that you're kind of squinting to look at, right? Um, yeah, fair play, eh? Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm really hoping lizards might be like a not a sleeper hit. I I feel like lizards give painters an opportunity that most of the other things GW do don't. You persuaded me not to do one today. Um, <laughs> I know, but that's because your other things were cooler. In the chat, would you rather see Andy paint a converted avatar he's been working on or uh, a, a lizard riding a dinosaur that's been out for a few years? 
Hey, the Avatar's been out for a few um, years. Don't yeah. don't force. Not don't... this one. This one's not been out ever, mate. This is this is brand new. This is oh a, converted. This yeah, is a yeah, completely yeah. Good, well. Right, you know, Elder Avatar kit, kit, kit or kit Elizabethan. Um, we'll do a poll on Instagram. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to learn how to do a fucking poll. <laughs> um, I'll do it. I'll do it, right. Well, that won't happen. So let's move, let's move on. To... All right, I'm doing it now. <laughs> let's go Proof on to the wrong. next one. Uh, what was another bit? Ah, oh, this one. Ruben. Really wonderful, wonderful painter um, who doesn't do GDs that often. Um, best, best track record of all time. Mm. Uh, I, I just and and to and to just like casually drop a massive great Alariel um as well. Just yeah, yeah lo love it. Really, really cool, really great concept. Love the basing. Um the idea of having it coming down around the plinth like that, just little elements like that, I think is fantastic. And Alariel um, spratting the life or whatever. Oh, it's the just dream. It's, That's my favourite bird. It's a really, yeah. really lovely set. And, you know, what's this mini now? For seven years old, old something mate. like that? Yeah, seven, eight years old. Like, And it's still just just outstanding. Um, and, I mean, you've had a go at this one, haven't you, Andy, for competition? Like, it's there's a lot going on. Yeah, I painted just the Alarial quite mm. in my early days, so I know I'd do a much better job now. But, um, yeah, I phoned, I phoned it in on the base on that one. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's so, a lot I, of I mean, I love yeah. it. I really, I really love this mini. I've always wanted. I did convert quite extensively a new version for GD, but I never oh, got Oh yeah, around. you've got to do that yeah. one. I'd forgotten about that. Never told, didn't it? Yeah, but, um, it's pretty. It was cool. funny. This was. I think this came out around about the time we were doing our first minis. Fancy ones were sort of going. Oh, it's fifty-four mil, okay. And then it was like, oh, hang on, a Lariel's basically a fifty-four millimeter um, elf queen. Um, like the, the the precedent exists. Um, that people enjoy painting it. Um, so yeah, I always love talking to Ruben. He's I don't know why, it just makes me happy talking to him. He's just <laughs> and still, still Big Child. Yeah, no? so yes. still working, yeah. still working for Big Child. Um, if anyone doesn't know Ruben's track record, he's previously entered Gold Demon twice uh, with a single mini each time and had two Slayer swords. Yeah. So I am sad that he's broken that track record of two, yeah. two, two minis, you, two swords. Do you know what, though? Got to say, that split line around the base really upsets me. Why? The what? Sorry, the split line around the bottom. He hasn't filled it to the plinth. The that really upsets line. me. Oh, is the bit where like the base goes onto the plinth? Yeah. Uh, Should have been that's all right, mate. That You'll get over it. Don't worry. Me. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was the yeah. sword. There you go, go. Uh, <laughs> Still gold though. Gold, Still gold, gold, gold. Yeah, yeah. It's a good gold split line. It's good. Uh, but yeah, really, just just wonderful. And again, I think a brilliant model for the painter. Um, yeah. To do. Inspiration I love the for me to do it again. Love, love sure. the little like the effort that's gone into the leaves, um, mm. on the on the, the the shrubs or whatever they are. Yeah, just. Yeah, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, did we have one or two more, Matt? We have uh, three more. Three more. Oh, there we go. What's yeah. up next? Ah, oh, so this is my fave of the uh, of the comp. Um, I mean, it's chaos, so I like it anyway, but I just, I love the composition of it. Um, I love, what's this? Is this, this is a new category, isn't it? So this is just Underworlds, Underworlds on its own, yeah. right? So it's not, not thingy. Uh, but the whole, the whole last edition of age of sigma that's coming to an end now it's meant to have been like era of the beast it's all been about you know it's all been taking place on the on the realm of beasts and it's all meant to be this wastelandy stuff and aggro aggro and all this and like this just encapsulates it mm -hmm. i think beautifully um and it's just lovely soft painting i just yeah lovely 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 um, yeah i'm so happy for liam as well yeah got got to do a shout out for uh I'm fondly calling them the younglings because me and Neil <laughs> felt really old next to him. Uh, but Dave, Fletch, Liam, all these these British guys that uh, hadn't been to US before uh, did the uh, mm. trip and uh, they absolutely smashed it. So I'm yeah. uh, really pleased for those guys to see them get their first demons and uh, they all worked super, super hard for them. And I enjoyed seeing them super nervous on the Sunday. Uh, how how uh, <laughs> how fucking old does that make you feel? It's like us ten years ago, man. We, me, me and Neil were like, oh, we're like the old ones now, giving the younglings <laughs> yeah. advice, and, and they're going to be better than us in a minute. Uh, oh, me and me and Fletch had a good cry together, though. It was good. Oh, yeah, yeah, a little, yeah. Little you, hug and a cry. 
We're the shouting tears. cry babies. Yeah. Tears on the stage. It was great. Brilliant. Brilliant. Lovely. Best means thing. a lot, eh? Yeah. Great. 20, 25 years, and I've only got seven now. <laughs> I, got to keep I was going. crying as well for yeah. this. Humble reasons. brag. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, so I've got time seven on my on my Instagram now. Up, uh, you need to, you just need to start embroidering all of your clothes with like the seven demons. Oh, just yeah. start, just like, don't put time. it in your bio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was a dad. I thought I was dad or captain. Someone said I'm captain. Yeah, you're still. captain apparently, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still captain. Yeah, nice. nice. Team Very captain. Good. Oh, Fletch is in the chat. Yeah, well done, mate. He's in there. Congratulations. Um, right. So, next one, Matt. Next one. Yeah. Oh yeah, great pick. I think you wanted to talk about this, didn't you, Matt? So yeah, this has a, a quite nice story behind it. So um, uh, Raphael, the guy that did it, basically he's been obsessed with this character. <laughs> for his entire existence <laughs> um uh he's sculpted this all himself uh it's completely from scratch nothing like he was showing me the whips like the horse is covered in all of the cloth and everything but he's gone in and he's done the muscle tones he built a skeleton did the muscle Penis. rig over that but i don't know about that but um no. <laughs> it, it's just like the insane levels of detail to to get to this bit i think he was a bit unhappy because it got shoved into um open for a while didn't it there is always a little teeny bit of confusion mm. with rules around scratch building and some people who i spoke to still think if it's scratch built it has to go in open but that's not true it's only if it's a larger scale that it has to go in the open so you yeah. can scratch build and I think that there was a little bit of debate with this one, but we pointed out the previous two 40k golds were scratch built. So if you've let yeah. them win a gold, then this needs to be in that because Maxime Pernod, um did the Nurgle mm. and then he, well, the Nurgle Hawk and the Nurgle Marine. I think uh, people just thought it was a kit bash because it's so spot on. Mm. But uh, <laughs> so and my my got bike as well. My got bike was complete scratch built. The mod, the you mod. sculpted the goblin, did you? No, the grot bike. No, the, no, the orc on the top. No, the orc on top wasn't. But that's no, not a, everything. It's not a scratch build, then, pal. <laughs> the whole, the whole unicycle. <laughs> that's not a scratch build, buddy. Just a kit, just a kit bash, then. Mate. Just a kit bash, basically. Yeah. All, yeah. That 3D, that's, all that three D design I did. That's yeah. converted, Tara. A scratch build is every single part original. Uh, um, all right. Just yeah. So what was the what's the, so, so he 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 did everything and they did everything. The, yeah, the comparison and the balding. Yeah. So he's. So we, I was chatting to him, and I think he, because we, we, because obviously Ben is, you, you guys have done stuff mm. with Mr. Blanche. Mm. Uh, ben has access to him, so he's a uh, wrong guy on the camera. He's created a little package for for John of yeah. the sculpt, yeah, and yeah. I'm shipping this out to Ben tomorrow, yeah, and uh, tomorrow. it'll go over to John. Wow, which I think what is a lovely, great lovely homage, eh? Yeah, and he had a few um, copies around, so he was giving them out to people. It was just like wow. I didn't get one. <laughs> it was great, mate. Like it, it. We've talked about it in the art episodes, haven't we? But it's it, it's, it's it's mad how stuff can have. I guess like an album, right? It's mad how what an impact certain mm -hmm. things can have on on people. Like I was yeah. chat, chatting, been chatting to an artist recently, and it's literally, you know, if it hadn't been for his artwork, I I wouldn't do this job um, in a sort of you know roundabout, not even that roundabout a way. Um, so yeah, I think it's lovely that they're able to do um, to do something like that, especially now with the, as you say, everybody's got connections. Yeah, um, it's uh, you're, but, never, uh, never, you're never too far away. I think John will be particularly happy for that because I don't think they've ever made this miniature in mm. any way. So mm. uh, yeah, it's a quite quite nice. Yeah. It's it's a great shot. Um, and this took uh, silver. Yeah, silver in mm -hmm. the old world, so the new category for. Or one of the new categories. Sorry for this uh, this edition. Yeah, the thing is, um, I think beforehand we were all a bit like mm, old world might not have anything, but this was this was insane. This this beautiful. Beautiful. It didn't have any old world minis this in is, it. This is this is beautiful. <laughs> um, right. Would you say there was one more map before one the more. sword? No, the sword. This one. Oh, it is the sword. Yeah. yeah, and there we go. Here we go. The one that, that <laughs> lots and lots of people have been talking about. I know our Discord. Uh, everybody was getting really excited about this one uh, earlier in the week or earlier in the weekend uh, when it went up. Um, what a brilliant concept uh, for a piece! Like it just screams like golden demon. These, these, this is the ones that you get the white dwarf 
and you're just pouring over it again and again and again, right? And it's just like, what a great idea. Um, you know, Kado as a car, a sort of character that's getting a fair bit of screen time, as it were, for Age of Sigma now. Wonderful model. Um, I think universally liked when he came out, right? Um, Spot on. It did yeah. feel like for about 12 months we got a new amazing vampire model every week. Long um, may it continue. Mm. So, yeah, it's too, like the right. Space Marine Lieutenant, isn't it? Of the old yes, but, but, yeah, but, but good. good. But good. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Yeah>. Rude. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Alex, uh, what's Alex's, um, oh, Alexandra, I don't know, I haven't, haven't met the guy. Um, what's his background necessarily? Because we didn't manage to get the interview with him. Um, is he a regular GD? The last few. Yeah. yeah, so he's competed the last few, and you can really see his growth. He did. Uh, a fantastic Iron Warrior, which I believe won a bronze a couple of years back. And it was, yeah. I do recognise the name. Yeah. yeah, his yeah. first yeah. one was the, uh, the, like uh, the Iron Warrior in 2022. And then he did the year after uh, with the amazing Khan model, which had the Japanese freehand on the back, which everyone really were, um, yeah, mind blown by that. Only beaten by Neil, the sword winner then. Uh, and he also won Lord of the Rings silver last year. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so he keeps progressing. And um, he actually posted a picture of this mini a while back. And it was just the top part without the reflection. Mm. And I remember I remember speaking to people um, in the run-up. And they're like, oh, this might get the sword. And I was like, I think this is going to get the sword. And I showed him the picture on his public Insta without the reflection. They're like, oh, this? And I'm like, Wait till you see the, the full <laughs> the full thing. And um, I think this is really important for Golden Demon because it's awarding creativity and originality. Yeah. And I've seen a little bit of negative chat over the last two winners um, being like they only want, you know, neat single, neat and tidy single minis uh, with the skink and with the Lazarus. Uh, but it is it's more about the best piece there. And if the best piece there is a small single mini like the skink, then that will win. But this shows that creativity is awarded. Uh, and that's just really important for the competition, I think. And it's it's super nice to see. And it's also nice to see people come up with the uh, original ideas and and get the award. Absolutely. Um and just to just to go back ever so slightly, um 2A is suggesting in the chat um that the reason Matt Kennedy is in fact able to do such crisp uh, edge high is because he is basically a borrower. Um, and and then and just climbs around the models and and paints them like that, which is a fair point. Um, I have only ever oh, seen him from from that. a distance, and from all I know, maybe he was right in front of me. Um, so yeah, it's a good chat. It's a good chat. Um, so yeah, as I say, a lot a lot of a lot of buzz around this one. It's just, it's a it's a fucking clever idea. Like it's obviously it's, it's really nicely executed. It's really nice paints. All the rest of it, but it's. It's an idea, isn't it? And those are the things. Those are the hard ones. I always do, say that. I always say I want. Um, I can't come up with my idea, and it is the most important thing. Mm. It's the same with Neil's Exodite, actually. And I said to Neil, I wish that was my model, like my entry, because well, it's an Eldar riding a lizard. I'm like, ah, <laughs> oh. and I can't. I spin. You know, he's done it now and absolutely smashed it. Um, but yeah, definitely wish I had that idea. Yeah, fair play. Shout out to Neil. Two years in the, on the on the trot. Uh, Gold for for a minute. We're going to have uh, Neil on uh, on an episode uh, soon uh, to talk about his miniature uh, and why uh, his use of AI has ruined Warhammer um, <laughs> and think things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, but back to this one. Um, so, did you get much of a chance to see it? Um, when, when yeah, you're there? it's super yeah. it's super convincing in real life. I think. Oh, I think good. What... That was going to be my question because it all, yeah. you, you know, because the photo is fantastic, right? It doesn't need the photo. Um... It it just works, and I I didn't get the chance to hold it like in my hands like this, um, but I did. You know, I looked it in the cabinet, and it's super convincing in real life. It's it's not a, just a photo effect. It's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really nice idea. Um, what really sells it as well is it's that that center plane. That he's put, I don't know if it's like a sheet of acetate or something, or just super thin, super thin. And it, the way it's mm. painted, when you look underneath, you can see the, like the opposite side of the lily. Oh, well, nice, it's really cool. And that, when you look at it, no matter where you look at it, that breaks the eye 
mm. you know, it breaks that plane and it just, well, whichever way you're looking yeah. at it, it creates the reflection. It's beautiful. The, absolutely beautiful. The way he's done the symmetry is, is brilliant because even with the tufts, he's matched the tufts on either side. Mm. So like he doesn't just use random tufts. He's got the same size tufts as well. <laughs> that must've been a fucking nightmare. Yeah. It's like an OCD's like dream. That's why I'm looking at it going, what a fucking nightmare. Yeah. As some, we'll, we'll always try and put people's uh, uh, social accounts uh, down in the description, guys, if you want to go and follow them um, and check them out. Um, has he put up many whips of it at all? Just I, I'd, I'd, the Just bit. partly just because I'd love to see it upside down. He's done that. He's um, posted right. pictures of it reverse. Um, cool. And you can't really, it's not obvious at first because it looks the same, but with yeah. a bit of blue, a ghost. <laughs> but if you scroll yeah. through his Well, and, his and gallery, no vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, there's a picture of it upside down. Uh, so something, cool. I, something I was wondering actually about it is the way he's rendered the top of the plinth with what almost looks like, to me, a cloud effect. Is that mm. intentional to actually be the reflection of the sky above the vampire? Oh, it yeah. Like it could be... Or is it like just a bit of dirt? Murky cloud. No, it's actually... Yeah. It's like a murky... It does, doesn't it? A yeah. murky resin. It looks yeah, like it yeah, could be yeah, the reflection right. of the sky above the vampire. Yeah. Me, like a pretty, stormy, yeah. stormy sky and stuff. That yeah. is cool. See? And again, that's, that's why they're wonderful pieces, right? Yeah. When you can keep mm. looking at them and keep finding new things. I mean, obviously, the creepy little red eyes hiding in the tree. But, you know, it's, that's always, for me, the, the real joy, you know, of, of, of the outstanding creative pieces you get. Uh, 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 GD, um, yeah, really, really nice. So, well, so talking about um, being able to see it and getting getting to see it stuff, give us a bit more of an idea of the of the show in in general. So, we uh, and we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this many obviously before it, but the the rules and whatnot, the pack and all that seem to be a lot clearer, a lot stronger. Um, you know, uh, you know, could have could have been out earlier but we've done an entire episode talking about it but it was there right but how was the sort of organization in general for the event you know where was it obviously with it not being a games workshop event like how was it positioned was it you know shoved Big out the way was it yeah the organization yeah. Was massively improved yeah it was great yeah those online forms just worked Great. Well, I think the um the biggest shout out to Games Workshop is the changing of the awards. So there used to be finalist and uh commend they added commended mm. and the problem was finalist didn't mean anything because I remember getting a finalist and being over the moon, but it became they were sending out a few too many. Um mm. and what they've done now is they've added another level which is notable entry, and that is below finalist. So what finalists used to be is is notable entry. That's your kind of first level. And then uh, then there's fewer that get a finalist and then fewer with commended. And what they've done with commended now is very few commended are getting given out. Uh, in, in one category, they gave no commended. Because, yeah, commended is essentially like just missing out on the podium, isn't it? Yeah. But they've, tight, they've tightened that up. So right. it, maybe there was a lot of commended before, like 12 uh in in some categories there would be one commended um which mm. to be fair in one category there were four people commended so four people went on stage and only one i was gonna say didn't. that yeah. was harsh that was really horrible did to they, watch, to be but did they do did they do it like at fest last year where yeah. you get yeah. you get all the finalists it's not the finest sorry all the commended then no one knows who the top three are yeah correct yeah great yeah. great i'm glad was, that was kept it was brutal when there was four. I it, felt really yeah. bad. It really mm. depends how you can take that as like just as a person. Mm. Like some yeah. people it's going to be fine. Some people it's just going to be <laughs> brutality. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, we talked about that, didn't we? At Festa, just just a, a lot of people may not be comfortable <laughs> going up on the stage if they don't know. I'd rather coming. have been hiding in my um, chair, that's for yeah, sure. No? <laughs> um, but that's really good to hear. And sort of... Um, Numbers wise, like well populated entrant like number of entries. I would sim say similar to last year, fewer than last year. I would have to know the stats for the totals, mm. but I don't I personally I see what Matt and James think, but I don't think it was a particularly strong year. And that's not a slight or a diss or anything. It just there were a few too many categories that mm. didn't feel didn't feel that strong. Well, and so I that, think that's my because next of question, yeah. Many. 
with that was how did it feel with the new categories basically I think, added in? Yeah. I think with the addition of the new categories and the rules pack coming out as late as it did, mm. I think those categories that were new did suffer quite a bit from lack of participation. Um, like yeah. in, was it large, a AOS large? Mm. There's maybe like what, 20 at most? Which maybe is that. crazy because they're the best models. Like yeah. large AOS models are the best. Um, and I was just, it's just kind of crazy really. But mm. I don't know. I just kind of want to see those categories filled a little more. I was yeah. hoping that the US GD would grow and grow. But mm. this year, this year there was some great stuff at the top. Mm. But just some categories just under represented and interesting and, you know vehicle got put into large um and i wonder if people wanted to stay away from that because of mm. that like tanks are getting put in there and whatever so um we'll see i feel like the some of the extra categories are nice but maybe it needs a tweak to be condensed a, a tiny bit more um but yeah it was certainly certainly not a bad one uh good slayer sword which is important mm. and some some good golds but uh compared to the uk one it's still very different i think the yeah. uk the uk one almost had 400 minis yeah. in single 40k and i th believe this one was around 600 for total something yeah. like that okay yeah i reckon i think it was probably about the same number overall as yeah. previous year but it was just washed out between all the categories mm. Mm. Fair statement yeah mm. nice. but you say the presentation wise and stuff though Nice, good. Felt felt fun. Yeah. Felt like yeah. a big event. Didn't just feel like a no, an afterthought. No silence. They're tweaking. Thought. They're trying. <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah. Those they're new... definitely listening. Yeah. Those new little um, frames you get as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. a big one. That's oh, a big yeah. one. Yeah. That's oh, really nice. So good. I forgot to put the yeah. picture up. Never mind. Yeah. I've got yeah, one. So the, oh. there's a <laughs> company that um, basically sponsored. Uh, I think oh. the, the cabinets. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. Oh, cool. Everyone Lovely. that was finalist and commended. Got this um, this holder for your card, basically, which is really really nice. And the card's really nice. It's specific for that event, and I believe they're going to do it for going forward. So that's a great idea. It's, it's nice because cool. they're they're branded as well. So yeah. it actually says Adepticon. Yeah. 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 So yeah. each each one you'll get a, a different very one. So very cool collection. Addition. That's cool. Love that's um, really cool. Yeah. Love but also the fact that all the winners um, have been measured up for their own custom cases. Yes. Yeah. So we're all we're all getting, you know, the what's it called? It's, it's the same the company that Wicked did those. Bricks. Yeah, Wicked Bricks. Yeah. So we're all getting custom cases for all of our. Oh, that pieces. thing that they showed as part of the licensee. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Oh, yeah, like the, fun, cool. the Funko Pop boxes. It looks like yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very yeah, cool yeah. little addition. That's a really nice idea. Yeah. Um. Well, just back to the the. Unless there was anything guys wanted to add about the sort of general vibe around the right around the comp i think it was just yeah. not no, really good. good again with with being a Depscon, you've got the ability to go around the cabinets at, until like all, all night you can literally go yeah, there at nice. three o'clock in the morning you can go there when there's no one else there you can have a couple of drinks and you can look at everything unlike <coughs> fest where you're stuck being kicked out at six o'clock unless yeah. you're part of the the, the, the lucky special. few that get to stay <laughs> off as you guys special guys or you get stuck in the endless queue yeah, you get stuck in the endless queue, you know. Um, whereas at Adepticon, you can just literally sit at the cabinets all night long. You can probably nice. look I love at everything. It. That's mm. brilliant. Best That's event exciting. ever. Absolutely. It feels, feels like, yeah, some like the old weekenders up, and right? stuff. And I know there's there's comments mm. that people say about there not being enough to do for painters and stuff, but there is. There's painting classes. There's free... And make, make your own entertainment as well, you right? Drink. You know, you can go and buy beers elsewhere. You can go mm. in Chicago. There's tons to do, you know. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's a very um, good event. We, to, well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, so to go back to the the sword winner, just so we, we do close out on it, um, I'll go back to a comment Oscar made a little bit earlier. Um, he was just saying he agrees, you know, with everything we're saying, but what he loves about it is that it's perfect Warhammer. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's it's true, isn't it? It is. It's another one of those snapshots. And and even though it is a vampire, so a very generic um, fantasy, you know, trope. Um, you look at this and it is obviously Warhammer. Um, so I think, yeah, I think Alex Alexander has done, done, yeah, just a outstanding job with this. So, uh, yeah, congratulations and congratulations to everybody, uh, who entered and put the time in, put the time and effort in, yeah. um, to, to do it's their pieces. Easy. Um, it's not easy, you know, and those of you that got the awards, fantastic. 
Um, and those of you that missed out, I hope you still uh, really enjoyed it um, as an <laughs> event. Yeah. No, I want to, if it's all right, can I say that um, I've seen a few people saying about um, my grot entry, um, saying about how I took inspiration from Mamacon. And yeah, I did. We all take inspiration from our people. You know, I saw it at the last fest and then looked at it and went, that's cool. That's a wicked idea. I'm going to take that and move that a step further. Good, so, right. yeah. As totally. nothing original take, under yeah. the sun, mate. Like take it's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. jumping out of tiny planes. Yeah, it's, right. uh, it's a nice one. Actually, um, um, oh, go on. I was going to say that uh, earlier. My favourite sculpture ever in the mini world is uh, Reflection by Patrick Mason, mm. which this but, reflection but just really... breaks yeah. just looking at it. I um, mean, I wish I could paint. I wish <laughs> I could paint that. It's unbelievable but yeah that's probably my favorite single sculpture out of our world and and, and this uh reminds me of that with the mm. the reflection but yeah check that one out uh, by patrick mason it's unbelievable uh lovely um wk sorry any update on the mpo waiting list yes mate well in fact we're just about to have a quick natter about the mpo so hopefully mm. i can fill you in uh on it now um so yeah congratulations again to, to everybody entered it's a lot of effort um so fair play to you um so matt next slide uh competitions painting competitions so we've obviously got our mpo running uh in may a couple of months now not far away um it did sell out very quickly um we've had a few uh return tickets uh, and i'm working my way down the waiting list for people um if i've replied to your email i've got it you're on the list okay there's just a lot of you on there so i am you know i'm slowly working through um and giving people the options to purchase those tickets uh sort of first come first served as it were with the order people got uh, in touch with us um but we're going to do a short show uh quite soon just with a few sort of little faqs and a bit of an update on where the uh, where the event's at but we made an announcement a couple of weeks ago um of who our judges are so yeah, very, very excited and very happy to say that uh, Albert, Rich uh, and Andy will be the judging team for this year's uh, MPO Bristol. So these guys are three of the very best display miniature painters in the world and have been now for a few years. Um, they're incredibly experienced. Um, they've won everything multiple times. Um, these guys are the tits. Um, so we're very, very grateful uh, that we've that but they've agreed to do it. Obviously, I mean, Andy has to do it, but we've, we're very happy that the uh, the other guys have agreed to have agreed to come on. Um, so you can be sure that you know if you are um, you know entering uh, this competition, you know these guys know that your your work will get all the time, all the respect, all the care that it deserves um, for the effort that you know that you've put into and the trust that you put in us to to display it. These guys, all they're doing the whole weekend, their job is just the judging. Um, so, you know, we wanted to make sure we had, you know, best, the best that we could get to, to do it. So we're really, really, uh, happy to have them on board and think that's, that's really important. So yeah, we, we promise that we will put in as much, if not more effort than you did, uh, on making sure these things are judged well, um, that you did in painting it. Um, and a few people, when we announced it in the comments got a little bit, I think, uh, intimidated maybe is the right word or, or, or overall was sort of like oh no that's it i'm definitely not going to get anything now the guys aren't expecting you to be able to paint as well as they can um you know it's not like well if this isn't slayer sword winning get the fuck out it's the the, the, the these guys again they, they are not just phenomenal painters they're very experienced painting judges they understand the painting journey they understand what separates different paint jobs from others um, they understand, uh, they can see where effort and execution and intent and all that has occurred. Um, again, it's why it's so important that you have these these quality judges and we've really, yeah, we're really proud we've, we've got these guys doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and also with the open system, um, it means that if there are 20 things that deserve bronzes, then 20 things will get bronzes. Um, you are not competing, you're not effectively competing against anyone else um you know and it is a competition you know no matter what you say like these these are paying competitions um and do remember that you've got the different tiers you have standard you have masters but we do also have that beginners um tier uh, admittedly you can't win you know gold silver and bronze for it and stuff like that but this if you know if you are right at the very beginning of your journey and you're not quite sure what's going on then you know reach out to us and maybe maybe the beginner tier is, is to, to go into but we can talk a little bit more about that uh, in the faq uh, type episode that we do but yeah just wanted to say because we haven't had an episode since we put this social post out and i am beyond thrilled 
um, that we've got these guys. Yeah. Just an interesting one, actually. Are you guys, do you know if you're going to bring some of your old previous entries to show? Yes, there'll be a yeah. display area of cult stuff. That's the reason um, to go anyway. As, as well. Just go and look at those. Um, so, yeah, and we're hard at work on 2025s mm -hmm. as well. We are looking to double. Yeah. And the entry form is nearly done. So, yeah, yeah, and Matt's Matt's got some new kind of spreadsheet porn or something. Yeah. Oh. It's great. It's great. And thanks very it. much to Discord uh, for helping out with uh, stress testing that. Uh, yeah, if you could move twenty five, so it's not on my anniversary weekend. I think my wife. Nah, good luck with that, Sorry, buddy. Good luck, yeah. with that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> goes Stop goes MPO. Just your anniversary yeah. AOS launch day. As I said, okay. as I said weekend to you guys, in Bristol. Lovely. She did turn around to me and go, "Oh, um, yeah, you can go if you want." So which I we all well, know. There you go. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Don't go! Don't go! Don't go! We yeah. all learn. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, it, it, it'll be it'll be fine, but we'll we'll fi we'll figure it out. But our intentions is to try and keep it the same, if not very close. We weekend each year. We want we want to get that locked in. But anyway, that's for the future. This this was about Golden Demon, but I just wanted to say, thrilled we got those outstanding judges um, to be to be doing the competition. Um, right, paint cultists. Let's have a look. Right. Uh, paint color is a hashtag, and it's really a lot more usable again now. Instagram's half sorted its shit out, so you can search for hashtag paint color. It's on Instagram, or you can check out the channel on our Discord. Um, and essentially, it's just a way to share your work that you're proud of. Um, it's a great one to follow to sort of expose yourself to different styles, different miniatures that maybe don't pop up in your feed, uh, your normal feed. Uh, so, what we got? First up, we have. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh yeah how cool is this I, I kind of figure this is what rich hopes he looks like in about 10 years <laughs> i was gonna say just, it's very hipster just needs yeah. a fishing rod right oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah to be fair rich you do fish so yeah there are there are 10 fishing rods just yeah. in that, that corner somewhere. <laughs> you can. did you, you can catch go. a nice fish the other day do saw it on your stories i did indeed look quite I nice indeed there we are any thoughts of, of blending the two hobbies? We're getting to a bit of taxidermy. Could do, yeah. Not a bad shout. Get the old magic yeah, wait, Waiting for you to do a video where you reel in a miniature and be like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> reel in a golden demon or something. That'd be quite yeah. nice. <laughs> I'll do it on magnet diving in the canal yeah. to fish your old demons yeah. out. Oh, he's um... been chucking away demons. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, just as a super cool bust um, and a, a lovely, lovely painting style. Um, yeah, uh, Bob, if you're listening, uh, tell me what your social oh, yeah. links are because you don't have anything anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's something to do with Discord, isn't it? Um, yeah, if you don't, you, you don't me previous mail display it or something. Yeah, yep. He's there. Where is he? Nice girl. One. It's me. Oh. I spur me premium mail. That's yes, me. link link your uh, Instagram or something. Uh, can't find you. <laughs> <laughs> nice one um but yeah i love this uh, this i would happily have on the shelf mm. yeah um, it's very cool yeah. it's like a realistic popeye yeah any idea how big oh it, yeah it? it's like a realistic popeye uh no idea mate. not a not a sausage um well, Bob's i'm sure i'm British sure one of yeah. your 743 plinths would fit it perfectly <laughs> that's what you're wondering oh yeah yeah um, yeah yeah. Told, told you, mate, they're not plimps, they're display bricks. Sorry, display bricks. <laughs> display bricks. Um, there you go. <laughs> DM. Uh, right, what's up next, Matt? Up next is. Oh, I love this. Ooh, that's love cool. this. That's cool. Mm. Nailed it. Big it, gun. The artwork, yeah. the artwork that this it's, is from is actually yeah, dark as fuck. It's Trench, insane. So it's, uh, which is cool. You've got uh, John Blanche on board now as an artist as well, which is amazing mm. news. Um, yeah, this is just potentially going to be amazing um yeah so for for fans of of uh, sort of grim dark aesthetic uh, and you know all that that encompasses um yeah um just lovely 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 take on it yeah and i, I wish i'd had the art actually to show this uh, next to because it's it's just a brilliant brilliant homage to the, the yeah, really is. um so yeah amazing uh right so next map next is <laughs> <laughs> now you're very lucky that basically this entire episode wasn't just croup. Um, <laughs> seen a lot of croup. There's loads of croup online. I know. I know. Um, it's yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's just, and we're going to be seeing. I imagine cool. a lot more. Well, I hope a lot more. I thought it was interesting that they didn't sell out that box 
Um, I think I think maybe mm. crew are quite uh, maybe a bit little marmite. I'm not sure, but I I can't wait to see it. Uh, one of our commission guys, Harry, has been uh, painting up the box as well. Uh, I think I showed a picture of his shape the other day, but he's done most of the rest now. And I'll drop those photos. They just look so cool. Um, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Do you know what one he's... of the best. Uh... One of the best Instagram handles I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> ignore the wild what, I love, I love, love, love the color on the the blend, like the greens and blues into each other. Ace, so I, I'm it's, loving. Oh, it's mm. just. Great. I was going to say that water, mm. that ripple, and that water is stunning. Mm. Yeah, it's a great mm. base. I need to yeah. do better bases. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then you're it's something. Tank, it's Matt. something everyone can, uh, what, can what? work on, right? Bit better base than your tiny tank base. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. uh, yeah, MPO online will happen every year, mate. Um, yeah, our intention is to run online around Christmas time and uh, in person uh, around the summer, early summer, um, for the foreseeable. Uh, we're committed to that. Um, so, what's up next? Matt, up next, there's is... a couple more, is there? Oh, I love these. Glad I caught these. Saw these a few mm. weeks ago. Uh, I know they referenced uh, Andy's tutorial you did on these around the new year, uh, and I. Th think they referenced Daz Latham's ones. I don't know um, about mine. <laughs> but I think it's just um I just I remember them mentioning in the comments that they they really enjoyed both those takes. And I just another great, great colour combo. Um, Yellow's epic, isn't it? It's really cool. Like I love yeah, the black lives. undersuit you've done with yours, but I've not seen this combo. I, I assume it's maybe from like fourth fifth edition or something like that was it did did was it ever an official scheme this there's, or is this... there's an alternate color plate i'm sure with right. this i think in this i'll have to look at the bible right. in a bit <laughs> just really really nice uh, and just reminds me that there is almost no bad eldar miniature um like you're talking like nine out of mm. tens almost across the board which is insane really um for, for an army of that size um, yeah i yeah. appreciate how he's Who hidden are? he's hidden the tactical rocks really well <laughs> Yeah, mm. every single yeah. one comes with one, I believe. <laughs> where's Karandras? They're just so, they're just so tactical, man. Yeah, so where, tactical. where the fuck is Karandras? Like the, it feels like a mist. Hiding in bush. Well, oh, that's true. Yeah, you can. He's actually there behind that. Wouldn't it be tub? good if they'd stealth released a character as like the base of another one? What about Imagine... Dante when they just sent him in the post to someone? <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, you say you buy the Lictor kit and it just happens to have the new, you know, the, the, the new Karandras on the on the base kind of thing. Like Gorilla, gorilla <laughs> oh, Martin. Well, what kind of thing. what about the, um, the, uh, the Titan that's on the horse base? The Titan that's on the, the, the horse base? The Reaver oh, Titan yeah. head. We're like, Plastic oh. Reaver confirmed. Behind me. It's behind me yeah. right now. It's a beautiful bit of basin. Um, worth every one. penny for basing that Confirmed. kit. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Um, <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, and I think one more, one more. Uh, and speaking of fluoro, um, <laughs> fluoro smoke and OSL and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, uh, I can say I see it a lot of places. It seems really popular right now, and I love it. And there's certain miniatures. You know, we've talked about it a few times about how the sculpted smoke effects are getting better and better. And I think there's certain ranges that suit it better mm. as well um, and i think obviously things like fantasy stuff in particular but like the, the git skaven that kind of stuff i think it's a really great ones to, to have a play around with and i just painted one of these myself because i've yeah. got my molog yeah it's on my molog that went into gd it's very cute well he's from molog isn't it yes beautiful yeah. model yeah. beautiful little model um but you know can't have an episode without a critter um yeah and uh, and here we go. So that's it. Quite a long one tonight, chaps. But I I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope the chat have. Um, you know, we've we've been, gosh, it's a lot more than we normally get. So We're I hope on it time. Was, hope yeah. it lived up to. Um, that's true. We just started on time, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, first time ever. Ten fifteen minutes. It, like, it took four <laughs> years. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed that uh, sort of little look at uh, GD. Uh, US and again massive congratulations to everybody uh, that entered uh, all the winners uh, and particularly Alex for that yeah. wonderful wonderful um, Slayer Sword piece I think I think people are going to remember that one for a long time which is which is a real achievement so, um, yeah, so, so yeah good good on you but yeah. um, was there anything you guys wanted to add at all yes one one oh. last shout out to the um, guys from Korea like Onion Knight and those guys oh yeah mm. um, yes really cool to see those guys cleaning up 
you know, put in the effort to come over. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of mm. effort. And the uh, dedication to their entries was apparent because yeah. they're, they're all meticulous painters and they're pushing themselves hard. So uh, big shout out to those guys. And it's good to get some, uh, you know, fresh blood in the game. So that's really cool to see. Yeah, There's some nice teams developing around the world as well. Now. Yeah, we need to yeah. encourage that. That's yeah, what we so want to do. Get the spreadsheet yeah. out, Matt. We'll have to start <laughs> making a, uh, a Teams page. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, no, it's, it's lovely. Man. But yeah. again, James Tara, thanks for coming no, on, cool, mate. Really say, appreciate have, it. Happy um, birthday to my mate Al as well, man. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. We can and your shout outs, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cheers, <laughs> cheers to me, mum. Cheers, <laughs> guys. Yeah. I thank Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that, that was, you've been in, you've been in America, mate. Yeah. It's been it was shy. Um, oh, you've got you know me. I love people. Check uh, yeah. check Tara's site out. Wonderful bits and bobs and does st- stunt bricks, action bricks, whatever we're calling them. Vision, yeah. Whatever you know. Posing Dis- bricks. What do you call them? <laughs> Display bricks. Fun flags. Display bricks. There we Display go. Display bricks. Um, yeah, check them out. But also, well worth following uh, your uh, painting account because you're a, yeah. you're not can, bad, mate. Not yeah, bad. I can I can get back to work now. Now I've finished painting GD for a few months. I can okay. do some actual work. Hey, then sure Clint's going to cast themselves. Yeah, yeah. Get, I know. Get, get on it. Start the get next one, don't we? Oh, mate. Yeah. It seems seems like GD's on the brain at the moment. There's a, there's a lot of lot of plimps turning through the store. Keep yeah. it going. Uh, a lot of people ask, will, will there be plints at the MPO? Yes, Tara's not going to be there, but there'll be his fucking plints will be there in some yeah. capacity, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll, <laughs> we'll sort it I'll out. Send, I'll send um, you a box down or something. <laughs> good lad, good lad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so thanks as ever, um, everybody in the chat. Absolutely amazing. Uh, and thanks a lot of your comments. Really appreciate it in there. Um, keeping it positive and uh, enjoying what we're doing. We'll see you in a couple of weeks for the next episode. But till then, thanks, chaps. Thanks, chap. Take care. Bye. Cheers, guys.